Hey, Mark Rosengarten here. So, usually I do photography. You're probably seeing some of my photography work. And about a year ago, I decided to try my hand at painting. Now, a brush is basically just a magic wand with which you create a world. You know, that's sort of a Bob Ross way of looking at it. But I've been sort of, you know, experimenting and playing and, uh, I'm not formally trained or anything like that. It's mostly just a trial and error kind of situation. It's kind of the way my photography worked out. A lot of YouTube videos. and So I figure at this point, let me see if I can put something up on YouTube myself to uh, show other people what my particular technique is, if it's something you're interested in seeing. And uh, I'm in my basement right here, and I have my furnace right over there. And every once in a while, because it's a cold morning, the furnace will kick on. So I'm not going to really be doing any narration. All right, so what I'm going to be doing is just give you this brief introduction. Then I'm going to set this on a time lapse so you can see this building as I go. Now, the, I've already pre-toned the canvas... And what I'm trying to recreate is this picture here that I took down at Plum Point on the Hudson on Sunday morning. I went down there, went into the back to my camera bag and realized to my horror that my camera was not in the bag. It was still up in my studio with the battery and the charger. So uh, it didn't work out so well. But I had my iPhone and so I figured... You know, I'm just taking a reference shot for a painting, an iPhone will do just fine. So what I have here is I have my iPad with the picture on it as a reference, and my Masterson Stay Wet palette. And the paints that I use are golden acrylics, and uh, I use the heavy body, and for some details, I also have a selection of their liquid uh, acrylic. Um, and as far as brushes are concerned, I've just collected a whole bunch of brushes. This is one of the very first, this filbert's one of the very first brushes that I bought when I started, but I have a selection of flat brushes, and one of the flat brushes I cut into a dagger, and, uh, you know, another flat brush, and another flat brush, and this I, I bought to do grass. It's actually kind of interesting and it will not be used today. So I'm going to put that back in something else. Uh, I found this brush. It's for uh, oils, but I find it works really good for just scrubbing in and suggesting small details. I love these deer's foot stiplers. Oh, I love these deer's foot stiplers. I have them in all different sizes. Uh, I will not be using the large one today. I'll be using the small one. I have a couple of little fine detail brushes. What I don't have is a good liner brush. This is about the closest I have to a liner brush. Uh, what do they call this one here that, that's just a round? Uh, that's something I need to add to my kit. But I also have this, this is one of my favorite brushes, this tiny little filbert here for getting in very small details. I just absolutely love it. Uh, and, of course, I have some blender brushes, which I use when I do the sky, and I constantly have to pick off shed threads from the, you know, the bristles will come off as I do this, so I constantly have to pluck those off. Since the sky is already toned, I won't need the blender brushes today, so I'll put those away. No use in having clutter. I have, I have knives, you know, uh, including, you know, the Bob Ross shape knife. I'm not really good at using it, so uh, I haven't really put this to much use yet. Um, so I'll probably just leave those in here. I got a couple of buckets of water, and I have some gloss glazing liquid 
that will help thin it out and put it on a little bit more smoothly with a little bit of transparency to it. The colors I'll be using today, I actually have arrayed on my palette here. I have uh, titanium white and yellow ochre, and this is cadmium red. I have a couple of the fluid acrylics here. Your cadmium, was that bright red? Uh, Pyrrole red, and I believe this is thalo blue. And then I have some cobalt blue, black. I have some burnt umber, uh, but then I have some uh, titanium white. And this right here is quinacridone magenta because I just love quinacridone magenta. In fact, I'm going to be using quinacridone magenta today to pop in the really lovely sunrise colors over here. So that's my setup. I also have this little spray bottle that I use in case I need a little extra fluidity. And uh, I guess that's... I guess that's everything. Sometimes if I need to mix up a small special batch, I'll use this Greek yogurt uh, empty container. I've got a whole bunch of them, <laughs> you know, and I got even more upstairs. They're very convenient. And I keep my gesso mix in one of these also wrapped up. So, uh, you know, use whatever you got around the house. Now, while you're doing this, I'm going to be listening to a podcast. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to break in and speak during this at all. This is all going to be time lapse. What's my podcast that I have for today? The Anti-Black Friday Gift Guide for Photographers, the Digital Story Podcast. This one is a really great podcast. I also have some other podcasts on here, including a really great one, the most recent episode of D&D &D Minus, uh, which is basically a bunch of really funny, great people playing Dungeons and Dragons at, on, in a podcast format. So I'm going to be listening to all that. Ooh, I also have a new Tips from the Top Floor. Yes! So that's excellent. And I'm expecting a new Skeptic's Guide to the Universe later. So while I listen to all this and work on my painting, I'm going to arrange the camera, get it set up so that you can see what I'm doing on the canvas. You won't have to look at this while you're doing it. Unless, of course, I have to get real close up because my eyesight is not tremendously wonderful. But uh, that's it for right now. So let's get on with the painting. Painting. 